Siege Wars. After the defeat at Mohach, Hungary, torn apart by civil war and wedged between Habsburg Austria and the Ottoman Empire, became a theatre of war. After they captured Buda, the Ottoman army took the middle part of the country by storm. A new line of defence started to build up against them. Six generalcies were established after the repeated Turkish conquests, with 20 to 22,000 soldiers under their command. They consisted of about a hundred more minor fortifications and a dozen large, well-built fortresses. These central castles provided defence for large territories, therefore owning them was of utmost importance. When one great castle was lost, the nearby smaller forts could not hold out on their own. The territories they protected were lost as well. Soon, the Ottomans also completed their defence line of castles. As a result, sieges became the most important military enterprises, often taking weeks or months. A prime example is the siege of Eger in 1552 and its successful defence. The movie, based on Gardoni's novel, clearly shows the misconceptions about castle sieges. One of these is the unprepared attack. The main elements of the fortresses of these years were the roundels and later the bastions. These fortifications were built with artillery warfare in mind. The infantry of the attackers built extensive systems of trenches to reach the walls safely. This work alone took long weeks. They were provided covering fire by the artillery, moving closely behind the trenches, bombarding the walls and their defenders from an ever smaller distance. The siege artillery tried to punch a hole in the walls. To increase the effect, the attackers tried to dig tunnels under the walls and explode gunpowder mines to destroy the walls above. The Escalade. The infantry gathered in the trenches around the hole well before the assault. It is undoubtedly a sight to see soldiers in a movie running with ladders on their shoulders towards unscathed walls. However, in reality, it was an unlikely scenario, as they would have been defenceless against the defender's fire and their ladders would not have been long enough to reach the top of the walls. The attackers assaulted the tip of the bastions and suppressed the defenders by small cannon fire, so they were relatively shielded from their gunfire. Ladders were used only to ease the pass through the ruins of the walls. Melee with the defenders. The large-scale utilisation of firearms could prevent the besiegers from overwhelming the defenders with their sheer numbers. Malay was thus a rare occasion. Siege cannons provided the highest firepower. The defenders used them to destroy the besiegers' batteries and siege equipment. They also used smaller, so-called field howitzers, mainly against enemy personnel. The strongest rifles were the hand guns, or hook guns. They got their name from the hook-like iron plate at the underside of the muzzle, which, hooked into the wall, broke the massive kicks of the rifle. The most used firearm was the musket with a fork rest. These weapons, used en masse, could unleash terrible devastation. Arquebuses had the smallest firepower, but they were also the easiest to handle due to their low weight. Various kinds of incendiary and explosive devices could be and were thrown at the attackers. Despite its flows, this defence system stopped the Turkish advance until the end of the 17th century. The, by this time, military and technologically superior Christian forces reclaimed almost all of St. Stephen's country in just 20 years.
Only Temeshku's remained in Ottoman hands for a short time.